you have a mass killing of uh, children in the womb. In France, the bishops are generally are more uh, discreet about it. And so because of that, the faithful are more discreet about it and nothing happens. Hey, we're here in Warren, Massachusetts, and we're so excited to catch up with one of my heroes, a father of 14 children. We're so excited that we were able to speak with him today and also speak with Canon Dumont, who represents an incredible gift to our community as he continues to support life and support the pro-life cause here in the United States. We're so excited that you're gonna be here. Continue to share with all of your friends, like, comment, and subscribe, and and we will see you on the Pro-Life Tour at ProLifeTour.com. My name is Stephen Rust and I'm excited to be on the Pro-Life Tour. So we were told uh, you had 14 children and... We're expecting uh, the 14th in August. Uh, so a, a lot of people say, well, we have this overpopulation problem. We should limit our kids. Maybe one kid, two if you're lucky. So why is God calling you to 14? We didn't plan it, but I suppose if you asked us in the beginning if we ever would imagine having 14, the answer would be no, mainly because we didn't know any uh, large families. That being said, it's a much richer family life than we ever would have imagined. I think there's oftentimes a suspicion, uh, like you say, kind of the overpopulation thing, which is just people are ignorant of the fact that that's uh, the exact opposite is the problem, that there's too few babies being born. Too few I, babies? Why, why is that? Yeah, Tell well, me more. I, I think uh, there's kind of a demographic crisis, right? So where people aren't having a great number or, or even a, a replacement level number of children you know I think the figure that's thrown about is 2.1 children born per woman in order to keep uh, a population kind of stable uh, when you drop below that uh, of course the population over decades will drop and that can have uh, implications say economically uh, culturally uh, all those types of things uh, the negative events that will harm everyone actually in a society um, so far be it from the responsible thing to limit uh, family size, it's actually the more responsible thing, actually from a common goods perspective, to have more uh, children, right? Uh, but one of the other kind of objections that time, sometimes people put up is that, well, how is it that you can divide your love uh, so uh, many times, right? So if you have two children, of course you can give them more love and attention uh, than you could to say 10 kids, right? Mm -hmm. And I understand that reasoning. It does make sense, right? From just kind of a simple mathematical type of uh, perspective. But of course, since uh, family life is kind of the place of love, right? Love being kind of an attribute of God and the gift that he gives us, it's infinite, right? So it's not something that is just limited and then will be divided up. It also fails to take into account not only the love between uh, the parents and the, each other and the children, but also between siblings, right? There's a great deal of love between siblings, which has been one of the great joys of our married life, is to see the closeness between uh, our children. Uh, and, you know, so if they get together, you know, the, the older ones, you know, they're out of the house, with one another, you know, say outside of just our, you know, nuclear family, uh, you know, growing up, uh, you know, they'll get together and visit one another at their houses and all that. And of course, they have spouses now and, you know, children coming. And so it, it's just amazing to see how much it does grow in a very healthy uh, and uh, <laughs> loving way. For anyone who wants to get involved in the pro-life movement or just you know, live a pro-life life, you know, what is your advice for them? I would say basically be open to uh, life, right? I think it's very easy for people to be scared nowadays. Even though we've actually lived in very humble circumstances, God has always provided uh, a way for us to accept life. Uh, so I would say don't necessarily listen to these same experts who are always telling us that we have an overpopulation problem. They will also tell you that, well, in order to accept a new life, you need umpteen thousands of dollars uh, in order to do so. While the math looks nice and tidy on a paper, real life oftentimes uh, does not work that way, especially when you allow God to enter into it in the help of His grace and all that. So I would say don't be afraid to accept new life, right? I am Canon Pierre Dumain, and I am excited to be on the Pro-Life Tour. 
you led a group to the March for Life um, yes, recently. Was. So tell us about that experience. It was very impressive because to see all these young people sacrificing their time, their money, going in a place, not the most comfortable place. When I came first in America, I was thinking that in a worldly way, that why you do that on the middle of January and not in a good time? Right. It's freezing to death, be smart. And when I did it two years after, in fact, it was, it was beautiful. It was a real pilgrimage, it was a real sacrifice. And to see a huge crowd full of life, full of energy, with this sacrifice to go in the middle of winter, because Roe versus Wade was done in the middle of winter, so we do as a sacrifice, and it's a penitential act, because there is a repression side uh, faced to this crime of abortion. Sure, it's painful, but it's painful for the sacred heart of Jesus to see all this soul that he created, all these babies who are um, uh, killed in the womb. We can suffer in our flesh a little bit, like he's, he suffered on the cross for us. Yeah. So uh, you said that abortion is a crime, but some people just say it's a clump of tissue. But science doesn't teach that. Science teaches DNA, and uh, <laughs> there is life, there is its own life. Uh, there is a special DNA with uh, life. So if you go in a little bit of science, it's not just tissue. Uh, we can say it's just tissue, like I'm a, part, a piece of tissue and you, you too. And we are alive, yes, like, uh, like this tree is also alive, it's a piece of food. Or there's more than that. And there's not a difference between the embryo of one day and the embryo of today. There's some little difference, yes. Like there's difference between a man of 20 years old and 21. There's little difference, but there are accidental difference. There is nothing, there's not a changement where at one time you became human and one time you don't be, you're not human. Right. And so, so for some, some will say, oh, but no, when they're younger, only one week, it doesn't look like a baby. If you have a man who born with a, a baby born with only one eye, and uh, no arm, it don't look like uh, you and me, but it's still a human being. And uh, it's, uh, no, after we can go in all the craziness of uh, even racism, because you don't look like me, because you're, uh, you're Chinese or because you're African or because whatsoever, you don't look like me, so you're not a human being. Uh, all this uh, idea of look like, it's not the, not the same. And to kill this life, it is yeah. to kill. It's not just to get rid of uh, some tissue. It's not right. uh, uh, taking care of our nails or whatsoever. Yeah, so uh, there was recently a ballot initiative vote in Ohio where uh, there were surveys done after the fact and people who identified themselves as Catholic, a great number of them voted for abortion in all nine months of pregnancy. So what's your message to Catholics who are voting for abortion? It's not because you're Catholic, but you're a good Catholic. We have a good example, starting with Judas, starting with St. Peter also, who deny our Lord three times. Uh, there's different kind of Catholic in different ways, but a lot of are ignorant because uh, the truth is not taught very well. In, in school, in Catholic school, sometimes the Catholic teaching is not taught, even quite the opposite, sometimes we'd say the opposite. In uh, some parish, the priest doesn't do their job teaching the Catholic truth. They do not know. They do not know because no one tells them. I've talked to other people who say that somehow abortion is an unforgivable sin. What do you say to that? And what would you say to women or even men who have gone through an abortion? There is not a sin which is not unforgivable. Even more St. Peter who deny our Lord three times, there is Marie Madeleine who have a very bad life. She convert and our Lord forgive her. The only one who cannot forgive you is yourself. Why? Just ask forgiveness to God, God will forgive you because he died for it. If you murder someone, you can be forgiven, there is confession for that. So if you murder someone in the womb or outside the womb, uh, there is confession available. What do you say to religious leaders who don't want to talk about this issue? Leader is to lead. <laughs> it's, uh, and so I don't want to lead in every single subject, but why you don't want to lead towards the truth? It's about life, we talk. I would like to see a Churchill uh, conversation and talk against the Nazi and the Holocaust, and that doesn't exist. Only Pope Pius XII talk about it. He could have speak more, or we can always speak more. You have a mass killing of uh, children in the womb, and you don't want to talk about it and lead about it. So I understand that you don't talk about it every single sermon. You have to address the subject once a while. You have to lead uh, by example. Oh, sure, you pray for it, but it's not just, you're not a private person, you're, uh, you're the leader, so you have to, to show them, you have to tell them that you pray for it and you have to encourage them to pray for it. It's one of the uh, things who mark me when I came to America to see all these bishops and all these priests involved in the pro-life movement. And it was a, a real comfort because in France, the bishops are somehow uh, talking about it, but the jury are more uh, discreet about it. And so because of that, the faithful are more discreet about it and nothing happens. We are leaders, we must lead. If we don't say it, if we don't push for it, and because we give the example, the faithful will do it, and they will do it better than us. <laughs> we have a good example here. If you slow down, 
uh, they will stop. If you stop, they will sit. If you sit, they will lay down. But also remember that if you walk, they run. If you run, they race. If you be pray, they will become saint. You must give the example, and by giving this example, they will do even better. They will make miracles. Do not be shy, because I know it's not very popular in some circles, but we are not priests, we are not leaders to be, to be followers. Albany Family Medicine is the one doing abortions here in the New York State Capitol. And so here we are, it's on the fourth floor, uh, right across the street from the hospital. And I think it's deplorable that they would think that abortion is family medicine, and it just isn't, it just isn't. And so here we are at the State Capitol. We just came from Warren, Massachusetts over here back into New York. And we are so blessed that each and every single one of you are joining us on this pro-life tour. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next stop during this pro-life tour, prolifetour.com.